when when your I- identity and your belief and all of that is built on a very rigid structure of things being flexible with them is a no-no because that questions the integrity of your entire structure, right? So like if the the foundational things that that I believe, you know, are x y and z and you call z into question, well that's the corner. That's a very integral part of my whole belief structure. And if if I need that to be rock solid and you're like, "Yeah, let's just talk about it." You know, I'm just going to come at you because and it might not even be a conscious thing. It's more of a subconscious like I'm defending what I believe and not even allowing myself to think about other possibilities because I have built so much up. My entire life is built on this structure that if I question the bedrock, maybe the sky is purple or orange. Like every, like it, it, it begins to, if you question the foundation, you question subsequently everything built on it. And it's, I think it's just human nature to react in a way that defends and protects, you know, your, your foundation, your cores or whatever. Uh, that doesn't make it right, but I think it is, uh, it is really interesting when, as you said, you do those things and you just see people like immediately like, Hey everybody, welcome to episode 138 of the Masterclass. My name is Cam Brett and I am joined, as always, by my good, 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 good friend, David Charlemagne Hogue. How are you, sir? I am fabulous. How are you, sir? Mm. I'm good. good. I like the fact that you ignored the whole Charlemagne thing, because I'm pretty sure I've done that stupid bit before. But hey, <laughs> it's, good to be, it's good to be back with you, and... Um, we are we are here. We're recording. We're we're discussing things. Ideas are flowing, and it makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see your your pretty face. Too. Thank you. It's good to see you as well. Not in person, but you know the wonders of technology. Yes, we are the Jetsons. We have the TV <laughs> phone. His boy Elroy. So we just don't have, ro- we don't all have robots in our house yet. So, and the spaceships are coming, but it's inevitable. It is. I just hope I die before Skynet takes over. <laughs> I would agree. That was a bit morbid. Anyways, it's going to happen though. Um, we are going to discuss the next section of Romans 9 tonight, starting in verse 19. and. I think we're just going to kind of go until we don't want to go anymore. How does that sound for planning? Yeah, we we really didn't discuss that, did we? Well, you know, I mean, we are professional podcasters, Dave, so. <laughs> yes. What, so at what point do, we, do you move from amateur to professional? When you make money doing something. Oh, okay. And technically, we are profitable. By a whole twelve dollars and like twenty five cents a month, so I will gladly grab that professional tag. Nice, nice, very nice. Dave, uh, do you know how we make money doing this? I think there's a thing called Patreon that we indeed. If you go to Patreon dot com, that's P A T R E O N dot com slash super megacorp you can see all of the different uh rewards and tiers we have for the awesome people that like what we do so much they're like yeah i'll give you a dollar a month or i'll give you five a month i hate to pander for money but i just want to make it known that that is an option and it is appreciated it is very much appreciated because i'm about to drop $700 on new equipment. So, you know, an extra three bucks a month would be great. (laughs) But the point is the show is free and will always be free. But if you would like to show uh, 
some support by throwing a dollar or a few our way each month. Um, that would just be super cool, and we'd appreciate it. But but more than anything, we appreciate your time and your attention and your willingness to let Dave and I yammer on your ears for a while. So, mm-hmm. anyways, back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> So yeah, Romans 9, yes, verse 19, uh, do you just want to read for a while and then we'll, we'll find a good stopping point? Yeah, and I'm actually going to go, I'm going to um, back up to verse 18. Oh, for context, indeed. Yeah, I, I think that, obviously, you can listen to the episode 137. Uh, but I think starting at verse 18 would also just help a little bit uh, with how verse 19 starts. So, See, this is another, another uh, example of you being a professional. <laughs> okay. <laughs> putting putting listeners, <laughs> listeners first. All right. Making sure that they're prepared. And also me, because I need you to read this because... <laughs> It's just, it's better. It's better in the voice of Dave Hogue. That's all. <laughs> oh, and I am in the NIV. Let me switch over to the ESV. You've been cheating on me with the NIV, Dave. I don't know if I appreciate that. No, that's like at church, it's an, it is NIV, so. But I'm mostly in ESV. Okay, so Romans 9, verse 18, until we stop. The so end then. of Revelation. Go. The end. <laughs> we'll be here all night. So <laughs> we'll then. be here for more than all night. <laughs> yeah, we'll be here for a couple of weeks, right? All right. Verse 18. So then he has mercy on whomever he wills, and he hardens whomever he wills. You will say to me then, why does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? But who are you, O oh man, to answer back to God? Will what is molded say to the molder? Why have you made me like this? Has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for dishonorable use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory? Even us whom he has called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles, as indeed, he says in Hosea, Those who are not my people, I will call my people, and her who was not beloved, I will call beloved. And in the very place where it was said to them, You are not my people, there they will be called sons of the living God. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, Though the number of the sons of Israel be as the sands of the sea, Only a remnant of them will be saved, for the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth fully and without delay. And, as Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left left us offspring, he would have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. So that's 29, so we'll stop there. There's a lot here. I want to talk about all of it. Yep. Okay, uh... Why does he still uh, find fault for who can resist his will? But who are you, O oh man, to answer back to God? That is, that is pretty much a smack to the face from Paul, right? Mm-hmm. It reminds me of that, that part in Job where he kind of like comes back at God with how, not necessarily how dare you, but like all of the crap that he's been through. And God's like, where were you when I made the world? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, oh, right. Okay, yeah, I wasn't. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, my spot has been, you know, I've been put back in my spot. And it is it is so easy. You know, like, I think of, I think of my mother, right? She has MS. She's had it for 20 years. Mm-hmm. She's in a wheelchair. Um, she is continually losing control of her physical body. Her mind is still sharp as ever. Super smart lady, super capable, can barely get a fork or a glass to her mouth Mm -hmm. without severe focus. And, you know, we have been praying for 20 years that she would be healed because there is no medicine that can heal MS. Right. At all. And 
you know, when I read something like this, who are you to answer back to God? Like, there have been times where I've been so angry about it that it's not fair, like we talked about, you know, in previous episodes. Um, why would God do this? And then I read something like this, and I'm just like, who am I, or who is my mom, that I can look at God and righteously be pissed at him for what has happened to her? Mm -hmm. Like, I love my mother. She's a sinner. It's not like she's lived a blameless life, right? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and that's not the reason for her sickness, but at the same time, you know, you read further on, it says, uh, will what is molded say to the molder, why have you made me like this? And I guarantee you, my mom has asked God that question countless times. Why have you let this happen? Why is my body broken? Why do I have this disease? Yeah. And so this, this whole passage to me has very um real connotations in my mm-hmm. life for how for how I'm you know processing it and and like I can make an immediate connection to my life of yes this exact situation exists with my mother um but that doesn't cause me to think that it's wrong for my mother to be sick does it suck absolutely do i want her to be healthy yeah, but this is a very helpful passage in learning how to navigate the concept of what I want versus what God wants and the extreme disparity between those two things. Yeah. Due to, as we talked about in previous episodes, God's ability to see all things at all times and to turn them all for his glory. whereas. I see my mom suffering Mm -hmm. and I don't have a nice way to tie that thought up other than that's just kind of where I'm at right now of if I say, and I believe that God is good and God knows what he's doing, then I have to be okay with my mom still being sick. Like I don't have... I can't say that God is good and God knows what he's doing and God is in charge and then also say, but it's unfair that my mom is sick. Like those two things can't coexist in the same, you know, thought process. Yeah. Anyways, that, that was just my gut reaction to this. That line, who are you, oh man, to answer back to God? <laughs> Again, another, another statement like in previous episodes, if anyone else says it, you sound like a total egotistical jerk face. Paul is obviously speaking on behalf of God here, but essentially God's like, yo, who are you again? Yeah. Are you me? Oh, no, you're not, because I made you. <laughs> like, and that's a bit of a cynical way to read it, but it, the point is made, like, he is the creator. We are the created. Mm-hmm. And it's really easy, especially for, for me, to feel like I could do it better than God. Oh, yeah. And think, well, you did it this way, and this way is messed up, but if I were in your shoes, I would do it this way, and I know better than you, which is, that's ludicrous. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, sorry for totally, like, stealing the show there but no i i think that's a very real uh, concrete example and i think it's valid and um it is it's easy for us from our perspective to think we could do a better no better um i just i don't think we totally completely understand the implications of um Living, living in a world where, where free, cho- you know, free will exists and choice exists and not to even imply that your mom, you know, anything that happened to your mom was a choice that she made or anything like that. But um, there is just that element of 
One, God is much bigger than we make him out to be. I just, I still don't think we can ever comprehend just how big and awesome God is. I don't want to be able to comprehend that. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Because then he's not God, right? Like there's an element of there needs to no, be No, because I think, and- I, honestly, I think, I think I'll go number two in my pants. <laughs> well, that's probably true too. Which, which, you know, might be really um, good for my ego and my pride, right? Right. That like, whole, like just the, uh, like uh, when it happens, um, when God passes by Moses and he lets Moses just see like the back of him and Moses' mm-hmm. face glows for it, like, part of me really, really wants that just so I can tell myself, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. You have so many glitches and issues. But that guy right there loves you and wants you to be part of his family. Mm -hmm. And he showed you his glory. So put two and two together and listen to what he says. Mm -hmm. And now I say that obviously, and it's the whole, it's that whole argument of, well, if I could just see, you know, God or see Jesus and I believe. And then all those people that saw Jesus and didn't believe, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, I need to stop. You you talk. I'm <laughs> I'm being a bad podcaster tonight. But but even in that, I think there is you know, and the the verse is not quickly coming to me. But there is an element of you know how much more for those of you who did not see me and see me do these things. You know there is that kind of. But yeah, so God is God, and He can decide what He wants to do uh, with us, and. It's about his, him being glorified and us realizing that he is God and that we are very small. Um, I, think that's, I think that's just one of the things that gets very lost in our world today is just this concept of we need to honor God, we need to glorify God. And, mm-hmm. well, and I just think for me, I just I don't always know how to do that. I'm not very good at that. Um, you know, and... Um, one of the things that's coming to my mind is, is, you know, uh, David and Goliath. And I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast here or not, but you know, that story has, have we? Well, I think two or three episodes ago, but it's good to rehash it because you made a really good point. Well, and it's just, what's coming to my mind again of just, we've made this into a story about the little guy against the big guy and the little Mm -hmm. guy winning against all odds. And It's really about David having such a strong desire to stand up for his God and to glorify his God that, you know, he does this ludicrous thing of, you know, fighting the Philistine, fighting the giant, and then he wins. And it's, you know, we've turned it almost into like a parable or, you know, of the little guy winning. And it's like, no, it's, that's how passionate how driven we should be uh, about God and our faith in that uh, we desire to defend him and, and protect his honor. Not that he needs us to do that. And then even as I'm saying this, I feel like we've gotten off kilter a little bit in terms of what it is that we actually defend. And I feel like we defend um, what we have made right and wrong versus this desire to glorify and honor God. And it's, yeah, we, we defend the denomination, the denomination. We defend the believing the right thing and not believing the wrong thing. And just this, um, you know, there was, there was something reckless about what David did in terms of just his love for God. And, um, I, there's, there's part of me that believes that in his mind, he might, that he was going to lose. And he was okay with that. Like, he would rather lose defending God's honor than letting, you know, just kind of standing by and cowering when the Philistines out there kind of, you know, making these atrocious statements about his God that he loves so dearly. And Mm -hmm. I'm much quicker to defend my position uh, on a particular topic or an issue than I am to defend God, to defend Jesus. And again, not that he needs that, but 
I think there should be something in the same way that when we're in a relationship with another human being, we, de- we desire to defend them when something negative is said about them or done against them. We should sort of have that same response against when it comes to uh, loving God and desiring to uphold who he is. So Agreed. So yeah, that was just kind of what came to my mind. All right, so verse 21 says, Has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for dishonorable use? And so this... And the rhetorical question answer is yes. <laughs> or no. The potter, no, the, the answer the, is no. He has no, the yeah. right to. He has the right. This is yes. a weird way. Yeah. Well, yes, the answer is yes. He has the right he has to do the right. whatever he pleases. And so... Um, and, and we would never question that. We would never question the potter using well, the clay for whatever do, he wanted Dave. to. People do. No, no, no. I mean a literal, a literal potter doing clay. Yeah, like someone would, would look question. at a piece of. Uh, yeah, I guess you're yeah, right. Yeah, they would. They look at art. They look at art you're and right. go, "What's this piece of junk?" Someone would pay seven grand for that, and then guess what? Someone pays seven grand for it. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's totally it's all it's it's so subjective, right? Well, like mm-hmm. that is that is almost like the human flaw that we think our opinion is gospel. Oh yeah. On a number of things when mm-hmm. generally speaking, our opinion's very ill informed. Mm-hmm. And so this brings me back to do you remember when I texted you when I was home a couple of weeks yep, ago I and do. I asked you, is there <laughs> is there free will in heaven? So my mom, out of nowhere, just, I'm home for like a day and a half, just to visit and hang out and, you know, see my family, take advantage of the close drive that we have now. And my mom, just out of nowhere, was like, oh, hey, by the way, uh, is there free will in heaven? (laughs) I was like, well, yeah, obviously. Never once even considered a question like this, and she tells me there's she doesn't think there is free will in heaven. And this is a discussion for an entire episode at a later point. Yeah. Um, so I just, you know, bomb Dave's day and send him the text. Hey, <laughs> is there free will in heaven? And he responds like me. Well, yeah. <laughs> and my mom's whole point is like, well, then aren't we just doomed to repeat this whole disaster anyways? And I was like, well, no. She's like, well, angels are created creatures and they fell. And I was like, but, but it'll be different because heaven's <laughs> coming to earth and Jesus, it's going to be fine. And anyways, we had, we had a, a debate about it, but oh, now I'm so stuck in that conversation. I can't remember where I was going with this. Has the potter no right to clay or the, uh, one of the vessels of for honorable use? Oh, and so then we went to the problem of evil, right? Mm-hmm. How could a loving God and a good God allow evil? And I told her. I don't think it's actually a problem. Because I remember there was a day in one of my uh, classes in college, and my professor, again, I'll mention him again by name because he's awesome, Dr. Ed Metters at Taylor University. He's been mentioned in like four episodes now. He's going to be super internet famous. (laughs) We were tasked with solving the problem of evil in our, you know, hour-long class that day. And... I've never thought it was a problem. You know, the argument is, how could a good, loving God allow evil to exist? And my response has always been, because he's God and he can do what he wants, which most people say, well, that's just a convenient argument. And my response is, convenience doesn't make it logically fallible. Sure. Just because it's convenient doesn't mean it's wrong. There are plenty of things in life that are convenient and right, like being able to go to the gas station and fill your car up, buy a soda, and get some WD-40 for your lawnmower or whatever engine. I don't know, Dave, you're the car guy. What takes that? (laughs) No, WD-40 is lubricant for your squeaky door. There we go. And some Cheetos for, for effort. But the point is, like, convenience does not make an argument wrong. Right. Yeah, invalid. Convenience is just something that you have to overcome if you want to disprove it. Mm -hmm. And so 
this whole concept here, right? Of has the potter no right over the clay to make one of the uh, make out of the same lump one vessel for honorable use, and another for dis- dishonorable use? As one of the lumps, mm-hmm. one of the bigger lumps, frankly, <laughs> um, God has every right to do with me as He sees fit, and if as He sees fit is allowing me to sin or in the case of last episode allowing pharaoh's heart to be hardened to further prove the glory of god he has every right to do that and it's not a problem that evil exists there's a song by switchfoot when i was in college called the shadow proves the sunshine and the whole concept is we can see light right and Mm -hmm. darkness is not a thing except that it is the absence of light. And in the same way we think of God and his goodness and his glory, we think of evil not as a thing, but as the absence of the positive thing. It's not an actual thing. It is just the absence of what is actually good and real and tangible and, and there. And so... I read this, you know, this question, I'm like, well, duh, of course the potter can do whatever he wants with the clay. He can make a masterpiece. He can chuck it at a wall out of anger. You know, not that God does that, but I think, I think my point has been made. Like, God has every right to do what he wills with the things that he creates because he is the only one capable of creating it's his world and we live in it, right? We are subject mm-hmm. to everything that he wishes and wants and desires and wills to happen. Mm-hmm. And this goes back to that question of who are you, oh man, to answer back to God? Like, who am I to be upset with how he does things? Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, the next verse is exactly that. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, verse 22 says, what if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory. So, I, I mean, that it's just that whole like. I mean, it's a very simple. I mean, it's a simple truth. If God is truly God, he can do whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. And we believe that God is a good God, that he's, Absolutely. A, that he's a holy God, and somewhere we've gotten kind of this mixed up idea that um, much what you were talking about in terms of, of evil is that it is always about, I don't even know what it's always about, What I'm, I, I'm in a loss of... God is love, Dave. Well, that's, I mean, I mean, that's truly it. It's, I, I mean, it's this just kind of, yeah, I, I don't even know what to put, put it into words, but that nothing bad will ever happen. And I think even with the promise of, <laughs> I'm sorry, you said what? <laughs> that nothing bad will ever happen. That's okay. That's what I thought you said. So right. carry on, you know, and, um, I, so you, so you know, you 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 ask the question about free will, and boy, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to articulate this. But in the in the world that we live in, there is disappointment, there's heartache, there's sadness. Mm-hmm. We get anger, and I am of the opinion that those are all things that make this life rich that make it worthwhile and so um you know i don't want to be sad every day i don't want to have heartbreak every day but i do think those things help us understand what good really is or when we're happy or when Mm -hmm. we have joy and that sort of thing and so contrast is very very educating right and so that's my i guess that's kind of my when we get to heaven and we talk about eternity and it seems like contrast is absent. It seems like from my Uh, earthly perspective that now we don't have contrast, but yet 
in so many ways. I mean, so many things that you can point to in this life. I mean, Star Wars wouldn't be Star Wars if we didn't have contrast, you know? It, it, it's... <laughs> There would be, there would be no great works of literature if we didn't have a conflict to be resolved. Yeah, and so yep. that, from my earthly perspective, in addition to free will, I'm like, okay, if that's not present, then what? Anyway, I think it's. So have you changed your perspective that it doesn't that it no it has I'm, to I, exist no, up there? I, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. I think for, I think there is free will still. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There has to be, right? I still think there has to be, yes. But <laughs> but then but then I guess there's also part of me that just says there has to be some contrast, but I don't know what that would be. Because in my mind Um H E double hockey sticks. So is it just we you know, we kind of look over there every now and then and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, don't don't mess up because we still don't want to <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't really know if like heaven and hell share like a fence. No, I know. <laughs> but I was thinking more like a peephole, you know, or you could. Right. But there's also <laughs> what's, uh, what's the C.S. Lewis book where the people from hell take a field trip to heaven the and hate divorce. every second of it. Yeah. I, 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 I wonder like, are they not? And that's even an easy concept for me to understand that people from hell would not like heaven. Yeah. That makes total sense. They don't want to be there. Right. Is heaven and hell not such a, like, eternally separate concept so much as it is like, like, obviously, we're eternally separated from God. I'm not trying to, you know, go all heretical on you here, but. Right. And even less in what a tragedy that would be. Right. But is is that not the indicator of free will? Sure. Right? I would say, yeah. That I, that I am in one and not in the other. Yep. And would that would that not then be enough contrast to say everything here's amazing? Yeah. When when I ever get bored of amazing, I can turn right and go, <laughs> yikes. You know, amazing still sounds good. Yeah. Amazing still yeah. sounds good. I'm good with amazing. Sure. But also we have to consider the unknown, right? I have never been in my thirty-two and a half years of existence perfect the way that God intended me to be perfect. Absolutely. And so while I'm used to contrast and conflict and disparity in my earthly life as a way to judge right from wrong, light from, from bad or darkness, good from evil, when I'm fully restored and resurrected in my heavenly body, maybe I have faculties that allow me to not require that sort of binary uh right. view of things. Yeah. That I will that I will grant is complete conjecture. And does not <laughs> hold up in a logical debate. That is complete conjecture. And if you want to trash all over that, go for it. You have my permission. Not that you want it or need it, but I'm just I'm trying to think through our options here. Yep. So, you know, hey, one day either we'll find out or we won't, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, either we'll find out because we're right or we'll be dead and we're wrong and it won't matter because we just will cease to exist. None the wise. And all those questions, just like our bodies, will turn to ash. Man, I really hope we're right. That other option is so depressing. <laughs> but so you won't depressing. Know that, so. I know, but I'll know it. Well, I won't know it, but I'll think about it now, and that will make me upset. <laughs> and that will cause more contrast in my life, Dave. I was watching something the other day of just somebody trying to find the answers, and they went to a, a rabbi and was asking about the afterlife. And, the, you know, the rabbi just They said, stole my idea. They stole your idea. <laughs> well, the rabbi said there is no afterlife, and so... That makes you the rabbi kind of, said that there's no afterlife. Yeah. Yes, that we don't believe in a heaven and a hell, and yeah, well, this, this that's life fair. is all you get. It's like, wow, yeah, no, so, no pressure. Yeah, now I really want to go talk to a rabbi. <laughs> Even us, whom he has called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles, which references stuff we've talked about in the last three or four episodes. 
as indeed he says in Hosea, those who are not my people, I will call my people. Okay, that's the whole Jacob and Esau thing yep. we talked about last episode. Yep. And her who was not beloved, I will call beloved. Same idea. Yes. And in the very place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there they will be called sons of the living God, which is super, super good news. Absolutely. As it turns out, being part of God's family, big win. Uh, And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the number of the sons of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth fully and without delay. So again, we've this is this just covers a lot of stuff we've talked about in previous episodes. But I wanna just sit there on this without delay business. Mm-hmm. Because I think I understand English, you know, at a really good rate. And without delay means pronto, right now. Like, no time between when a promise is made and it is fulfilled. Mm-hmm. You know, I like, I think of, like, my internet connection. Without delay. I click a button, website loads. Without delay, right? Yet, yep. here we are, some 2,000 years later. I can't quantify that. I'm 32. No, yeah. 2,000 is a lot more than that. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I think that the two the 2,000 years for me is probably one of the biggest hangups that I have of just, I'm a little bit in this place of, well, that's the job of the Holy Spirit, and that's what's different than, you know, God communicating in the people in the Old Testament, and even Jesus walking this earth, and even, but... I have a hard time with that. If I'm, if I'm absolutely candid, I'm I'm very hard. It's, it's just too, it just seems like a long time of truly no God, like not speaking. And, and that's not even totally a fair thing to say. Like I said, because I do believe that the Holy Spirit has spoken to people throughout history. And I, I certainly can, can point to those, but I'm, I'm more just the Moses in the burning bush type thing, or, you know, even, (laughs) Even Jesus walking the earth, or even Paul's conversion, and again, I suspect that those things have happened and do happen. I'll just say that that that's that's lately for me been one of those just I just don't understand. Um, and yeah. I and and personally, I wish it was different. I wish there was a little bit more tangible. And it's just funny because even as I'm saying that out loud, there's this part of my like just inner being of just God going. You know that's not totally true. You've experienced me. You've encountered me. You know I'm real. And so, mm-hmm. gosh, what an odd just... <laughs> I, w- I know I've experienced him. I know God is real. I, my humanness, my flesh, I want something a little more, more tangible, a little more concrete than what we have. So maybe that's where I'll leave that. Yeah, well, I agree. I would, I would love for like, you know, hey God, high five, and like we actually get a high five, you know. Yeah. Um, I bet he gives a killer high five. Just saying. I just bet he's like got something perfect. He's got something even better than that. Like, yeah. Like we're just gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's just so cool. <laughs> How did I not think of this? We were stuck with the stupid dab sniffing our elbow armpits, and you've got this thing the whole time. It didn't even tell us. Oh, heaven is bodacious. Uh, yeah. I just said bodacious on a podcast. Oh my gosh. Anyways. <laughs> I'm not even a surfer from the 90s. Yeah, I won't even tell you what word normally follows bodacious for me, so. <laughs> bodacious? Yeah, like bodacious is always followed with like the same word after it, so or words, so. Booty? No. No, I'm not. No, I'm not okay. gonna say it. <laughs> we'll save that for when yes. we stop recording, and then we shall ask for forgiveness. <laughs> for the Lord will carry out a sentence upon the earth fully and without delay. So, oh, oh, what I was gonna say is again, and this might fall under the category of, well, that's a convenient argument because God, right? Is this referencing without delay in our time frame or his time frame? 
Yeah, exa- exactly. And and I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just throwing it out there as a possible interpretation. Uh, so, and as Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left us offspring, we would have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah, which is uh, Ash. Yes. Just throw in Lot's wife there, too. Salt. <laughs> So yeah, uh, there we go. I had other th- other things I wanted to say, but alas, it is late and my brain is shutting down. I'm I'm there with you. I think we are going to call it a podcast here, and I do just want to say, uh, first of all, thank you so much for listening and for giving us your attention and your time. Like, there's nothing more valuable in our lives than time. Mm -hmm. We can't replace it. We can't get more of it. Um, And that might seem super dramatic on a podcast, but I just genuinely thanks from both Dave and I for, for giving us the time for this episode. And um, if you want the show notes, you can go to uh, supermegacorp.net slash masterclass slash 138. Or if you're listening on your uh, phone, computer, tablet, Pretty much, if you're listening, you, the show notes will be there in, in, in the app or on the website uh, that you're using. There will be links to get in touch, um, which are going to be email. And my Twitter link is going to be gone because I don't use Twitter anymore because it's the devil, Bobby Boucher. <laughs> I might have an Instagram one up there. I don't know. I still haven't decided if I'm going to. This is all stuff you don't need to know. Show notes. <laughs> Supermegacorp.net slash masterclass slash 137. Links will be in the show notes. And uh, Dave, save me. I'm crashing hardcore here at the end. No, we just appreciate everybody tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Yeah, I just... We we have had a a consistently strong upturn in downloads and listens over the last like eight months. And I just grateful. Yeah. Just, we just want to express our, our thanks to everyone who has been a long time listener. Um, but also those that have been new listeners and are consistently, um, you know, the new people that are coming to the show. That's, it's just, it's crazy to us. Yes. That, Complete strangers all over the world listen to this show. And, like, not in a bad way, like in a really cool, awesome, encouraging way. So, with all that said, thank you so much. This has gone on far longer than I wanted it to. <laughs> <laughs> but we're just, we're just grateful, and um, we hope that whatever goes on in these episodes, that, that God is using it to encourage you and to uh, reveal more of himself to you because that is something that he can do even through people like Dave and I who would, I think, honestly attest to you that, hey, we don't have it all together. Um, We're just dudes with microphones. So anyways, I'm going to stop talking now because this is getting awkward, but we will be (laughs) back. We will be back very soon with our next episode. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Sorry for the terrible outro. (laughs) Bye. Bye.